When the sun goes down, the monsters come out to play. Some of those stars you see are actual psychos, and they'll kill you. In the last decade, astronomers have uncovered a sinister side to our universe, killer stars, with the power to destroy on a cosmic scale. We hear about Death Stars in movies, but they actually exist in real life. Solar systems torn to shreds. Living worlds vaporized in an instant. Somewhere in the universe, dozens of worlds just like ours are being annihilated by killer stars. Scared of the dark? You should be. June 2015. A small robotic telescope scans the night sky over Chile, South America. The All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovas, or Assassin for short, is programmed to spot the bright flashes of light that mark the death of giant stars. That night, the telescope found a faint glow in the sky that nobody had seen before. At first, astronomers think it's a nearby supernova, but when they analyze the light, they discover something extraordinary. The exploding star was unimaginably far away, nearly four billion light years. To be visible from that mind-bending distance, the flash of light had to be a record breaker, the brightest supernova in recorded history. It radiated more energy than the sun will radiate in its entire 10 billion year lifetime, but it did that in a month. This is at the absolute edge. This is the brightest we think a supernova can possibly be. Astronomers named the record-breaking blast of light Assassin 15LH, an appropriate name because this super luminous supernova was a mass murderer. This supernova isn't just gonna destroy life on the planets that orbit that star. It's gonna destroy life on millions of planets. That's millions of apocalypse events. The destructive power of 15LH had little to do with explosive force. This deadly assassin's weapon was light. To understand how brightness can cause devastation on a galactic scale, planetary scientist Nina Lanza is supersizing a familiar backyard experiment. All the light entering this giant lens is being concentrated into a point right there, which is maybe, you know, half an inch to an inch in diameter. Look, we're already, we're already catching wood on fire, so that's amazing. That was only a few seconds. Light is made up of tiny packets of energy called photons. And the more concentrated these photons are, the greater their destructive effect. So right here, we have more photons. So you could call this brighter. It's much brighter in that little spot than it is outside of the lens. So brightness is catching this wood on fire. Nina's backyard death ray is thousands of times brighter than the sun. But the superluminous supernova 15LH, that shone hundreds of billions of times brighter. An onslaught of photons so concentrated, it would have vaporized the surfaces of nearby planets and stripped away the atmospheres of more distant worlds. A real life, mass murdering planet killer. And who knows, maybe, some of the millions of worlds destroyed by 15LH could have had civilizations just like ours. For a normal supernova, the kill radius is about 30 light years. We think the intense UV radiation from a supernova will destroy the ozone on Earth if the supernova happens within 30 light years. A superluminous supernova like 2015LH is so much more luminous than a normal supernova that the kill radius is much larger maybe 500 light years or even out to about a thousand light years. Imagine a volume of space stretching 1,000 light years in all directions. 
It holds hundreds of millions of stars and perhaps billions of living worlds. Just one superluminous supernova in the center of this space is all it would take to wipe this vast region completely clean of life. It's violent enough when a single star blows up and destroys its solar system, but these actually might be the true mass murderers of the universe. So how do you turn a giant star into a mass killer like 15LH? Astronomers have observed only a few dozen superluminous supernovas, but they think the secret to their formation is spin. Superluminous supernovas start life as oversized, bright-burning stars known as blue supergiants. These blue supergiants live fast and die young, burning through their fuel supply in just 10 million years. As they die, their cores collapse to form a super dense object called a neutron star. And if this neutron star is spinning fast enough, it can develop intense magnetic fields, transforming into something new and altogether more extreme, a magnetar. All neutron stars have very, very intense magnetic fields, but sometimes a true monster is created. There really is a limit to how powerful a magnetic field can be before it starts to rip apart space and time itself. And right on the edge of that is a magnetar. Magnetars are like neutron stars on steroids. Their intense magnetic fields reach out into the expanding outer gas layers of the dying star raising temperatures and releasing an intense burst of light. But to get the kind of brightness produced by 15LH, you need a very special type of magnetar, the most powerful, fastest spinning magnetar we have ever seen. It pushes the magnetar model to the absolute limits because you need the magnetar to be rotating with about a one millisecond spin period. That means the neutron star has to be spinning a thousand times per second. And then over the course of the month of this explosion, you need, to, you need to take all of that rotational energy that's inside the neutron star and blast it outwards into the surrounding star to make the light show that we see billions of light years away. 15LH was the brightest supernova scientists have ever seen. And almost like a perfect storm it could be the brightest supernova we'll ever see. There's a theoretical upper limit to how much energy a supernova can generate, and this thing was right at the edge of it. Fortunately, superluminous supernovas are also super rare. So we're unlikely to have one explode in our neighborhood anytime soon. 